I'm with uh, Doug Begley at the Press Enterprise. Doug, we, you and I together went out and uh, were at the uh, Prim 300, uh, held by a score, and uh, the kind of the first big race on BLM uh, property after the uh, fatal crash in Johnson Valley. Talk about what you saw there and, and uh, the event and how it was run. Well, one of the key components that the BLM and organizers had done is they – decided to restrict access to a lot of the racetrack area. In mm. the past, spectators had been allowed at the pit areas, right. as well as the main pit, but always had been kept at some distance. This year, both pits did not have any spectators. There were much more uh, stringent crowd controls, even at the start-finish line. They had about an eight-foot chain-link fence that, I mean, obviously you saw, that kept the spectators away from the track about 30, 35 feet. Right. That was done to avoid any kind of conflict between the race itself and the spectators. Right. And then, like, in the pit areas, too, they had these strict speed limits as well that uh, they had not been in place pre previously as well. Um, the the overall spirit of the racers was uh, interesting, I, I thought, uh, pretty independent. Hey, you know what? Our sport is safe. This was an anomaly. Uh, is that what you ran across in your reporting? Absolutely. I mean, anybody that is into desert racing mm -hmm. is very supportive of it. Right. And they do everything they can, within reason, obviously, to make it safe and to spread the message that this is safe. They've had, I mean, accidents happen. It's racing, just like NASCAR, just like IndyCar. Right. But they stick by their safety record. And while most of them consider what happened in Johnson Valley at the California 200 tragedy, they consider it just that tragedy and accident, something that with a little bit of safety tweaking can be avoided and still the racers and fans can enjoy. All right. The uh, other thing, too, that we talked about or learned was that there's differences between how the Bureau of Land Management manages uh, land in Nevada and in California to, cer to a certain degree, and explain that as well. Well, Nevada has always restricted access. There are roads, obviously, that go through the federal land. Mm -hmm. Nevada has always had a policy of shutting down the roads, restricting access, and the promoters or BLM polices the roads. And if you don't have a, the proper pit pass, if you don't have the proper credentials, you are not getting past there. All right. In Johnson Valley, partially because of the topography, partially because of the popularity and the limited staffing that the BLM has, they haven't shut down the roads. They have said that it would take an extreme special circumstance for them to restrict access. It's one of the things they're looking at now, but they had not done it in the past because they want it to be open. That right. land is supposed to be for off-highway vehicles. And the and the other part of this uh, was that we saw lots of BLM um, police officers and uh, had sort of a surreal experience where they had pull, pulled over one guy and basically had zero tolerance for uh, any kind of trespassing on the property. Absolutely. They saw his truck parked on a rise that was right off one of the main county roads mm -hmm. that clearly he had walked down a little bit of a hillside through the desert to try to get a better view of the racing, which was right. maybe a couple hundred yards, would you say, away. Right. He just wanted a little bit better if view not longer. of the dust trail. <laughs> if not longer. Right. He wanted a better trail of the dust. <laughs> he wanted a better view of the dust trail and the racers going through. Right. He later flagged us down and said, Hey, I wasn't going to go near the track. It was no big deal. And he was kind of surprised that they didn't give him just a warning. Right. But they wrote him a ticket for $100 trespassing fine. It was a very interesting event. I mean, it, it seemed like everyone was very sensitive to, to what had happened. And that um, score uh, in particular was saying, look, you know, our events are totally different than other, other events. We're the, yeah, we're the big I mean, dogs. That's one of the things. Is score, more MDR. There are a lot of these companies that promote their races. They all do things slightly different. Mm -hmm. Score has always had a very restrictive policy with fans. They, it's not that they dislike the fans; it's that they want to keep the fans at a distance because right. these are professional racers. Right. MDR to legend from the California 200 and other things did not have that quite that that quite a level of scrutiny mm -hmm. and strict standards. But for the same time, that's not as competitive a race. It's generally growing more local competition, not national competition, and they want people who feel like they're a part of the race, right. that they're, you know, in the action. That race didn't have uh, million-dollar trucks running through it. I mean, it was a little bit lower lower level, I, I should say, right? I don't think so. I mean, the mm. comparison I would use is Robbie Gordon, who races on the NASCAR circuit, mm. raced in Prem. Right. I don't think he's registered for the California 2 Right, exactly. Hey, Doug, thanks a lot for joining us. Not a problem, sir. I appreciate for it. For the Press Enterprise of P.com, this is Lewis Amistoy.